Hey there traders, welcome back for episode number 81 from the stockbandit.tv. I hope that your trading week is going well so far and uh, you're making a little bit of jingle out there. So, you know, in this episode, what I want to do is, uh, you know, kind of mention, of course, one development that just took place in the in the major averages today in the market, uh, but also how that kind of corresponds with uh, trading individual stocks. And so, without further delay, here we go. Uh, the NASDAQ right here uh, has just confirmed a lower high and a lower low, okay? So we've got uh, this uptrend that's been climbing here since the March lows. We now peaked in June, we pulled back, we bounced to a lower level, and then we pulled back to a, you know, a, a deeper pullback level. So you know, it looks like in the short term we're getting a little bit of a change of direction possibly starting to take place here. Now that's uh, corresponded with a pretty nice move to the downside the last few days. So hopefully you're able to profit on the short side from some good moves out there. But that doesn't mean that we have to go straight down from here. You know, We could do some backing and filling. Obviously we've got this unfilled gap here from last Thursday and so you know even if we bounce here we still have established a, a you know a lower high and a lower low in the very near term so i think that's certainly worth noting now as you consider the possibility that this market may head lower moving forward you're obviously you know going to if you're like me you're going to be looking at trading some of the short side but you know one thing that i i found in looking through a lot of the charts out there and i just want to run through a few of them uh, here for you Take a look at these charts and, and really uh, you know, eyeball kind of this area right here on the chart, okay? Just keep your eye in this region of the chart and tell me what you see, okay? Really, all of these stocks have a very common theme and it's not that you know, they're restaurants or that they're you know, financial related stocks um, you know, or, or energy stocks, it's not that. What I'm really seeing here is a lot of setups which uh, you know, have been correcting you know, let's just take Panera for example. This one's been sliding very st slowly uh, lower in the last few weeks, but in this move that over the past few days, it hasn't undercut support. Okay, virtually none of these, and pretty much all of these, I guess, none of them have undercut support. And so I've drawn these lines here to make that a little bit more obvious to you. And so. What does that mean? Does that mean that if we do crack tomorrow, that these are the ones to turn to because they because they haven't moved uh, yet? They really haven't broken down yet. So now, uh, if we do get further weakness, now these are the ones to turn to. You know, uh, you you could do that if you want. My personal preference is no. I'm not going to do that because I'm wondering here as a trader, why haven't these undercut support? We just saw a great move down over the past several days, as I mentioned. You know, Nasdaq, S and P, Dow. All of them have made nice moves to the downside over the past few sessions. But if a stock like Capital One, for example, and I'm not really trying to pick on this stock, but you know, if it can't crack support in that kind of a move, I don't know what it's gonna take, okay? So my preference as a trader is I find setups like this, you know, if they start to break, maybe I'll take them for a trade, but I'm gonna keep them very tight. I'm gonna put them on a very short leash if I'm looking to short sell these because they haven't really proven themselves to be among the weakest stocks out there, okay? Now, turn back to uh, episode 79. You know, we, we talked about some of those weak stocks out there uh, in the market, some of the weakest ones out there have really made some great moves. Stocks like uh, UNT, take a look at this breakdown here out of this failing bounce that I pointed out. You know, that's a, that's a wonderful move to the downside. I hope you caught some of that. UPL, here's another one. You know, this failing bounce that I mentioned right here led to plenty of downside, very persistent selling pressure. Take a look at that. Just, you know, domination on the downside. Uh, Apache, here's another one here. Just really fell out of bed. Uh, EOG is another one here. I mean, there's some very good moves out there. Uh, XEC. There's another one, tried to, tried to bounce and just couldn't make it happen, rolled back over. So, you know, these are the weakest stocks out there and they definitely could still move further at this point. But I feel like entries, at, at, you know, right here 
are a bit of a chase and I think it's best to just wait for new setups to emerge and that's most likely going to occur after a, another week bounce you know similar to kind of what we saw right here it may take a few days uh, or some some rest you know just some sideways movement where you see another you know kind of short-term trading range established and then you've got some parameters for entries and exits to to possibly play for some continuation type moves out there but when you find a stock you know like bank of america it's been respecting this 12 area so much lately uh you know i'm not counting on that one to just fall apart because this market's really corrected nicely the last few days this one hasn't participated that much hasn't broken important short-term support the way the nasdaq has okay so thanks for joining me for this episode i will be back soon with more videos but in the meantime trade like a bandit